What is up guys, welcome back to another video. This is the Kugo Kirin G3 1200 watt single motor setup. This is one of the first reviews and initial impressions you guys are gonna see on the internet. This scooter was given to me by them. This is gonna be a non-biased review. This is gonna be just basically my first impressions to let you guys know, is this thing worth it? This is one of the most affordable scooters out on the market. And with this type of setup, we're gonna find out if it's worth it. So let's get started. Now stepping back and taking a wider look at this G3, you see that this is an all around rugged scooter. You could take this thing on the trails, through the city, on dirt, on gravel, through the woods, you name it, this thing is ready to go. Now I'm six foot and weigh 184 pounds and this max load for the scooter is 220 pounds. The backpack that I have on today has near all of my camera gear and probably with the bag and myself on the scooter weigh in and around 200 pounds and this thing still moves pretty quick with having 200 pounds of weight on it. Now the weight of this thing is not the lightest thing out there but it's also not the heaviest. 55 pounds this thing weighs and a lot of other dual motor scooters I've had out there weigh upwards of 70 plus pounds. So 50 pounds is actually pretty easy to carry once these handlebars are folded down. You can carry it up the stairs just like luggage. Now it says the max speed is 27 miles per hour. We'll definitely be testing that today. I will not be doing a range test today, but we will revisit that here in a near video. The 1200 watt single drive motor is what's gonna propel you up to that 27 miles per hour. But I'm hoping, like I said, that we can get in the 30s on today's video. The battery used in this scooter is a 52 volt, 18.6 amp hour battery. The tires are 10.5 inches and they're air filled. The suspension is dual suspension, front and rear with two disc brakes. These are mechanical disc brakes, not hydraulic. Now, that's not to say that these things don't stop, but at the end of the day, you do want something with hydraulic brakes when you're traveling at this rate of speed. Now this thing costs about $1,000, but you can get 40% off today by signing up on the Indiegogo link that's listed below. Now if this thing is in the running for a scooter that you might want to purchase, then I definitely would watch to the end of this video to see if it's actually something worth it for you. Now checking out the cockpit of this scooter, you see there's a very wide display. This wide display is actually touchscreen, and it's one of the first touchscreen displays I've ever used on a scooter. Now this thing is actually pretty intuitive and has several different modes. Now one thing I would not recommend is actually touching the screen or using any of the functions on the screen while riding the scooter. For your best safety, that's something you probably don't want to do. Now the grips are a very nice grip. This is more of like a BMX mushroom feel. Very nice and soft to the touch. The mechanical brakes are very nice when you're pulling them. Now one feature I'm really happy to see on this scooter is a thumb throttle. Safety is key. Thumb throttles are the safest out there. A twist throttle on a scooter can be pretty dangerous and with the thumb throttle you can let your thumb off versus trying to let your whole hand off of a grip when you have a twist throttle. That's something you would see more featured on electric bikes. Now I think thumb throttles are actually becoming more and more advanced with the torque sensors and with all the advancements I've been seeing on the bikes with the thumb throttles, I think we're going to be seeing here on the electric scooters in the near future. Now as we move on down, you see that reflector on the front. The reflector on the front will allow you to be able to fold down the handlebars in the most discreet way possible. You thread out the reflector and then the handlebars will fold down. You'll use the strap on the handlebars to hook underneath the foot plate on the back of the scooter and then that allows you to be able to carry the scooter anywhere you go. Now on these scooters, you're gonna have several different stances. Now, I recommend that you try to find the one that fits most comfortable to you. Here's a couple of the options that you have right here. You can stand with both feet facing outward or one foot facing forward and one facing outward, or both feet facing forward. Now there is one more option if you're trying to be a little bit more aggressive on the trails, you put one foot on that back platform, it'll give you a lot more agility when you're on the trails, bobbing and weaving, or if you need to jump or pull up, it'll give you a little bit more leverage when you're pushing back on that back plate. So with all that being said, let's get back out on the trail and see what this thing's capable of.
and pull out the big cam for this part because this is absolutely insane. For being a single motor driven scooter, I'm used to doing like dual motor drive scooters on gravel like this. And actually this felt pretty safe in my opinion. I'm not too sure about the power as far as like the instant torque, but I mean, this thing was pretty nimble on this rocky gravel path. Now, another thing to kind of note is the braking. So I was actually pretty shocked with the braking capability with this because this isn't hydraulic. These are actually mechanical disc brakes. Now let me show you the distance that it took to be able to stop from basically 31 miles per hour to what you see back there. All right, now I jammed on the brakes starting at this dark line right here. We followed all the way up and you see where the scooter stopped. Now I'd say, I mean, let's just do a little bit of a scientific measure right here, but my guesstimate will probably be about 30 feet from the scooter to me. Maybe a little less actually. All right, so I don't know how accurate this is, but this is the iPhone measure tool all the way up. All the way up to the scooter and right there. It is 26.6 .6 feet. All right, so roughly 26.6 .6 feet as far as a complete stop on this gravel. Now, this isn't the fastest that the scooter can go. Supposedly, it can go over this top speed depending on the body weight of the person that's riding the scooter. I weigh 184 pounds, I'm six foot tall. This is a single motor, and I've been able to get over 40 miles per hour on a dual motor before. So I'm hoping that we can get about 32, 33 miles per hour. Let's get it on the street. Now, the next thing I want to find is a jump for this thing. I got to test out this dual suspension. Woo! power on this thing. All right, now I couldn't find a jump, but I like to take pride in my balance, all right? So right there, it starts from the bottom, kind of works its way up, and this is as wide as a regular curb. And I'm gonna try to balance all the way off to the end to pop off of the end. I feel like that'll give you guys the best representation of what to expect when popping off of curbs. Because I was looking for a jump, but how many of you guys are actually gonna be buying this scooter to actually just jump things? So I'm just assuming that most people buying this would be using it for urban city riding, going to and from work, or wherever you guys might want to ride. So with that being said, I'm going to thread the needle here on the curb and then pop off to flat, just like you guys would in the city. Not too bad. The suspension is actually pretty decent, especially for popping off the of curbs. Now, I do not recommend doing that unless you guys already know how to ride a scooter or a bike for that matter off of things because I think that could end pretty bad for a lot of people out there that aren't necessarily very familiar with how to do those things. So with that being said, if you guys want a tutorial on how to pop through, you know, the city and going downstairs and popping off the of curbs just on scooters, let me know. I feel like that'd be a fun little video to shoot. On to the next. shrubs test. The shrubs are damn near as high as the handlebars right now. We're gonna start from a dead stop. We're trying to make our way all the way through. It looks like that there is somewhat of a trail there, so maybe we'll be making our own as we go through.
right, that is a Kugo Kirin G3, 1200 watt single motor setup. Now this thing was a blast to ride. I gotta say, I am thoroughly impressed, especially for it being a single motor. Usually these scooters that have the dual suspension and the big rugged tires are a dual motor type of setup. For being single motor, I am actually really impressed. Now if you had to ask me what one of my favorite features were about this, I would probably have to say between the touchscreen display and the way that the handlebars fold down. Now, a lot of these are pretty mechanical where they have like a fold out lever right here to allow the handlebars to fold down and then it clicks on the back end there. Now, I like the fact that it's kind of discreet and incognito of the fact that you can just unscrew that front reflector and then it folds down and then this little tag right here latches it on the back. I want to say that's probably one of my favorite features as, as simple as that is. All right, so with all that being said, if you guys are interested in more information on this Kugo Kirin G3, click the link in the description below. They have a whole Indiegogo set up right down there, and you guys can learn more information about this bad boy. I'm going to be keeping this thing around for a little while. I'm going to be putting it up against other scooters that I have, and I wanted to do maybe like an urban style video where we can kind of teach you guys how to get through cities and kind of pop off of curbs and just be more nimble on a scooter. So if you guys want to see that in the near future, put a comment below. Be on the lookout for videos daily this week. I'm going to be doing videos every single day as well as shorts. And with that being said, if you guys like this video, drop a like. If you love it, hit the subscribe button and I'll catch you in the next one.